Hello, and welcome to the Virginia Beach Campus's online virtual library presentation. Today you will be learning about our college's online library services, which we call the Virtual Library. My name is Jen, and I'll be your guide through this process. If you have any questions after the presentation, please feel free to contact your campus librarian. Now, please sit back, maybe take some notes, and pay attention because you will soon be using all of the information presented today to do your own online research. First, I want you to consider the following questions. Do you know how to find the virtual library? What additional resources are available from your virtual library? Where can I find information on APA? And how do I search the virtual library? We will answer all of these questions and more in this presentation. So, by the end of this presentation, you should be able to do the following tasks. Know how to access your virtual library. Be able to navigate to additional resources. Access the individual library web pages. Perform a basic search. Know how to narrow down that search's results. And be able to access and use the search results. So let's get started. First, we need to know how to find the virtual library. Luckily, there are only a few short steps to access the world of information available on the virtual library. To get started, we're going to work from the Brian Stratton main web page. You should know this page. This is the gateway to most of the online tools available to you through BSC. You probably already know that you need to click in the upper right hand corner on current students for this next step. You'll do this to get to the virtual library as well. Now, this is your student success page, and you've probably seen this page before too. This is where you access your student email, you access the bookstore to buy your books, as well as where you access those online classes that you might be taking. But for today, we want to focus on two special links, the go to virtual library links. These links will take you to the virtual library. Now, you're probably asking, why are there two links? And the answer is simple. The first link, the go to virtual library on campus link, is used when you are physically on campus and using a campus computer. The other link, the go to virtual library off campus link, is used when you are not on campus or when you're not using a BSC computer on campus. So, like your own personal laptop. The, se the second link can be used whether you are at home, you're on your own computer here at campus, or if you're accessing the virtual library from your mobile device, so your phone or a tablet. If you're using the on-campus link, the first one, you'll go straight to the virtual library. One click and you're there. If you're using the off-campus link, you do have an additional step. So, if you're using the off-campus link, like I did here on my phone, you will be redirected to a login page. You will need to enter a username and password, and this combination is the same username and password that you'll use to log into the campus computers or your campus email. So, you enter your B number and your own unique password. Once you've put in your username and password, you'll be redirected to a page that looks like this. Simply click the Click here for virtual library link and you will successfully access the virtual library. Now, if you ever have access issues, please contact your campus library for assistance. This is what you'll see when you log into the virtual library. But before we get into researching with EBSCO, I want to introduce you to additional services that are available through our virtual library splash page. Smart Thinking is an online tutoring service that is available to all Brian and Stratton students. You will receive an email to your student account in the fourth or fifth week of your first semester with a username and password to Smart Thinking. If you don't receive an email or have forgotten your credentials, contact the campus library for assistance. Smart Thinking is a great resource for you as a student. It provides one-on-one -on -one help with a variety of subjects. It offers weekly drop-in sessions individual sessions upon request and offers a paper assistance program. 
the Chat with a Librarian link directs you to a service called Question Point. This service connects you to a librarian 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. To use Question Point, click on the link, enter your name, email, campus location, and question. While the librarian on the other end will rarely be your campus librarian, the Question Point librarian can help to answer many of your research and reference questions. Another great resource for you will be your campus library page. Clicking here will bring you to your campus's individual library page, where the campus librarian can supply you with information identified for you and your classmates. This is the Virginia Beach campus page. There is information on the library, pathways, additional links to smart thinking and question point, and also a place for individual instructors to place their syllabi and tracking calendars online if they choose to do so. But of all the resources available for you on this page, one that it might be extremely important for you is the Brennan and Stratton System APA Guide. To access this, you will need to open the APA Resources module by clicking on the plus icon. Doing this will open up a list of supplied APA resources. The fourth link down will open up the Brian and Stratton System APA Guide. So when you're doing your papers at home, you have access to the BSC Guide at all times. This guide is 27 pages of great information where the librarians throughout the Brian and Stratton System have put together a how-to in writing APA citations, complete with format and examples, and at the end of the guide, there is a sample paper to show you how it should all look at the end. Now, we've talked about the several different resources available from the splash page, but we haven't talked about using the actual virtual library yet. Our virtual library is powered by a software company entitled EBSCOhost. EBSCOhost provides Brian Stratton a service called EBSCO Discovery Service. EBSCO Discovery Service allows you, the student, to search several different databases that the library pays for you to have access to all in one spot. Now, the key to not getting overwhelmed is to know how to effectively and efficiently use the tools designed by EBSCO. Now, there are two ways to search for information in your virtual library, the basic search and the advanced search. This tutorial will cover the basic search function. To begin a basic search, you input your keywords into the search box. The Boolean operator OR and NOT can be used, but the operator AND is already implied. So for instance, if I input emotional intelligence, as you see here, the system will look for both words emotional and intelligence. If you want to search for the terms as a phrase, you can use quotation marks around the entire phrase like this. But for right now, I don't want to use my quotation marks. I want to search for both terms, so I'm going to remove them. Once you're satisfied with your keywords, click the search button, and this is where the fun begins. This is what your initial results page will look like. You will see several things on this page. Your results, which will initially have articles, books, ebooks, etc., will be provided here in the middle. On the left hand side, you'll see options to further narrow down your search. This list continues down the page beyond what we see here. And on the right hand side, you'll see additional resources available for you to search. You will continue to see the main toolbar across the top. If you ever want to return to the splash page, click the new search button. Now, the thing about using the basic search is that when you start, you don't have any search limiters in effect. Limiters will be very important to your searches. The limiters will make it much easier for you to find the information that you need or want for your papers. As you know, different instructors will require you to use different kinds of resources, and utilizing these limiters will get you to those desired sources. So, understanding how to use this panel is extremely important. First, you'll see that there is a box that shows you all of the limiters that you have in place. This box is referred to as our bread box. If you ever decide that you will want to eliminate a limiter that you have in place, all you need to do is click the X next to said limiter. 
and your search will then recalculate without this limiter affecting your search. The first set of limiters on the panel include full text, which is default in your search, catalog only, which when selected will show you results from the physical Brian Stratton libraries, and peer reviewed. To set any of these three limiters, all you need to do is click on the box next to that option. So here, you'll see that I've added the peer review limiter to my search, and it is now represented in the bread box. Now, for the purpose of this demonstration, I'm going to remove the peer review limiter by clicking on the X. You'll see that it has disappeared from the bread box and my search result has been updated. The next limiter, the date slider, will probably be very helpful for you. As many of your instructors require that you use a resource within a certain date range, whether it be 10, 5, or 3 years, you can simply eliminate all older sources in one spot. Now, you have two options when using this limiter. You can simply drag the slider over to the desired date range, or type in the dates that you'll accept in the boxes. I personally find that typing in the dates is much easier. Once you have put your dates in, they will be represented in your bread box as well. Now, there might be pre-dated information represented in your search. This will show you the years or years beyond the current date. That is fine. All this means is that when you're typing in dates, you don't want to change the end date, otherwise you might be eliminating the most recent information from your search. Now, let's look at some of the other limiters available lower down on the panel. The next option to narrow your search is the source type limiter. This limiter will give you the option to narrow your search down to specific kinds of publications. So for examples, academic journals, books, magazines, etc. If you see the publication type that you want to limit to on the panel, simply click the box next to that limiter. If you want to see more options, you can select the Show More. This is what you'll see if you click Show More. It will show you several different options to choose from. Click on the source type that you're interested in, and click the Update button to add this limiter to your search criteria. The next limiter on the list is Subject. This limiter in particular will help you when doing your initial research. To open the limiter options, click on the expanding arrow. This will open that menu. Now that the subject menu is open, you will see a list of subject tags. These tags work like subject headings in a library catalog and are created by the authors or librarians to help users like you find articles that pertain to specific subjects. Again. If you click the Show More, a pop-up window will show you an expanded list. Scrolling through this list might help you to further define your research topic. It might suggest additional keywords to revise your search. It will also show you what subjects are better represented in the databases. Just like when we looked at the source type, click these boxes and click Update to apply these search criteria to your search. Now, let's discuss some of the other available limiters. The Publisher Limiter lets you narrow your search by publisher. So, for example, the New York Times or Harvard University Press. To narrow down by publication title, you can utilize the Publication Limiter. So, for instance, if you only want articles from a specific journal, newspaper, or magazine, you can select these under this menu. There's also a Language Limiter. Now, you probably won't need to use this, but if for any reason you're seeing articles published in a different language, you can limit it just to English. The geography limiter can also help to limit your search. This limiter deals with a specific geographic region. So, just like with the subject limiter, this limiter can help to narrow down your results based on the content of your resource. Also, the Content Provider Limiter will limit your resources to items from specific databases. As I mentioned earlier, the Virtual Library is comprised of many different databases. In the basic search, you can narrow down to one or a few databases by using this Content Provider Limiter. Some databases are specifically designed for different subjects. So if you know which are suited for your topic, this is a great tool to get rid of all the other fluff 
that you might get in a search which doesn't limit to specific databases. Now, you're probably wondering why I skipped this location limiter. And it is a very astute observation. Remember back a few slides when we discussed the catalog only option? The catalog only option will limit your results to resources at the Brian Stratton Libraries. The location limiter will further narrow down this search by selecting your campus. So for instance, if you want to find books at the Virginia Beach campus, you should do three separate actions. Remove the full text limiter, select the catalog only checkbox, and finally select the Virginia Beach campus. Once you have put your search criteria to work, you will see that your results list is limited to just books in your library that apply to your search keywords. Now, like in the first search result, you will see that Virginia Beach is not showing in the results list. What you'll need to do to find the information for your campus is to click the Show More link. Once you do this, you'll see the other campuses that own that particular title. Find the Virginia Beach campus copy or copies and make sure it's listed as available. Jot down the call number and you now have all the information you need to go to the library and look for the book. If you need any help finding the book, just ask at the reference desk. Now, if you look at the second search result, you'll see that it's not available in our library and that is indicated by the fact that it lists the due date for when the book should have been returned to the library. But, if you click on the show more, you'll see that there actually is a second copy that is available for you in the library. Now that we have gone over all of the limiters on the left hand side, I would like to quickly expose you to a few additional resources that you might want to use. I've gone back to our original virtual library homepage by clicking new search on the top left corner. To do a basic search, I'm going to enter my keywords into the search box and click search. Once I'm in my search results, I can access additional resources. So, for instance, the first search result is an ebook. This is an entire book that is available for you to read from our virtual library. You can also limit your results to only ebooks by selecting ebooks in the source type limiter that we discussed earlier. But what I really want to show you now requires us to scroll further down the page. As you scroll, you'll see that there are additional resources on the right hand panel of your results screen. There are news articles. These might help you find current event resources required for some classes. There are related images, which might help you when you want to find images for PowerPoints or other presentations. And you might actually see related videos. Although not all search results will yield related videos. But right below that, there is a button to access the Gale Opposing Viewpoints Reference Center. This is a great place for you to find resources on topics that are controversial. This resource can be very helpful for you when you're writing your papers or creating your speeches for your sociology classes, public speaking, critical thinking, and many of your other classes. When you click on the red box to access Points of View Resource Center, you'll be prompted to enter a password. The password for this is Bryant, as in Bryant and Stratton College. Once you have entered opposing viewpoints, you will have access to all the information there provided that you click on the title of the different articles. Now, here I've gone back to our original virtual library results page. As you see, you have lots of resources available to you. And let's discuss how you access those. You'll see that result number two is available as a PDF, and that result number three is available in HTML. These are the two main access types you'll have through the virtual library. For any resource, clicking on the title will bring you to a screen with additional information on the resource. 
Here, I've clicked on result number two, and you'll find everything you need for your APA citation, whether it be author, publication information, access information, etc. When you click the PDF full text link, this will actually open the article. When you have access to a PDF, you can use page numbers on your in-text citations. Here, I've clicked on result number three, the HTML resource. You'll see that much of the same information is available on the top, but you'll also see that the article itself is available below. When accessing the HTML resource, you will need to cite the paragraph in your in-text citation. So for example, we see paragraphs one, two, three, four, and five here. You will use these paragraph numbers in your citation. Now you've completed our virtual library tutorial. We've thrown a lot of information at you, so let's conclude quickly. You've learned how to access the virtual library, whether it be on campus or off. You can now navigate to additional resources such as smart thinking and question point. You can access the individual library web pages such as the Bryant and Stratton Virginia Beach campus page. You can perform a basic search and you can then narrow down your search results using the limiting panel on the left hand side. And you can access and use your search results whether they be PDF or HTML. I want to thank you for taking the time to listen to our tutorial. If you have any additional questions, please ask your campus librarian. You can call into the library at any time, send us an email, or just come in and see us. Again, thank you for participating in our tutorial, and I hope you have learned several new things that will help you during your time as a student here at Bryan Stratton College.